Good morning, welcome to TriStar Digging. I appreciate you joining us today. We've got a little different, well, actually we've got a lot different video today than we nor normally do. I'm up in Knoxville, Tennessee, and I'm headed to the McGee Tyson Airport to meet a fella up here. And uh, we're gonna take a little airplane ride today, actually a jet ride to New Jersey. So we'll get to the airport here in just a minute. I'll introduce you to our pilot for the day. And uh, stick around, this is gonna be an interesting video. I, I'm looking forward to uh, this flight and uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun. We'll get to meet a fellow YouTuber and uh, talk to him just a little bit. Pulling in at the signature uh, building here, and we'll find a place to park, and then we'll find our pilot for today. Parking by permit only. Can't park there. Let's back up over here and find another place in this parking lot. All right, I've made it into the airport now, and uh, like I said, we got a pilot here. This is Kenny with Plain and Dirt Simple, and Kenny's got kind of a unique YouTube channel. Cause he fools with cows, excavators doing dirt work. And then I'm assuming that we're walking to this one. I'm assuming this is the one we're going to take off That's in. It. Is that it? That's it. I tried to go in that one, but they wouldn't let me out. Yeah, we, uh, yeah, we might not go get in that one. <laughs> Can you tell me about this plane here? All right. This is a M2 Citation M2. Um, this some specs on it. You can go to 41,000 feet in it, 400 knots true. Um, you get a climb rate of, average if you're going up in the 30s about 2,000 feet a minute um, you can put seven passengers on there and then me um, and haul about 700 pounds of baggage it's 400 in the nose 300 in the back um, takes off from about 3,000 feet lands a couple thousand feet got uh, Williams engines on they got over 1,900 pounds of thrust so it's a got Garmin 3000 avionics you can see that and it's got three screens it's a, it's a small plane, but it's a performer. It's a nice plane. Um, I've had it loaded down, and it does well. You can go, uh, you know, if you got it loaded down, it's about an hour and a half yeah. flight time on it. Uh, today's Friday. Kenny called me, I think, on Monday and said, hey, I'm going to be coming through Knoxville area, going to New Jersey to pick some people up. And uh, said, do you want to go? I said, yeah, I want to go. <laughs> So uh, that's where we're here today, and uh, we'll do a little bit of recording while we're flying, taking off and landing. Set, set back and enjoy. There's no tell what Kenny and I are going to get into today. Yeah. I asked Kenny one time in a comment, I said, I believe I can fly that, Kenny. It looks a lot like, fly, or, uh, looks a lot like uh, running an excavator. He's, it's a similar concept, he said. You just don't want to hit anything with it. All right, here we go. Climb in here. Good night. How would I get in this thing, Kenny? Yeah, you're going to have to kind of throw your right leg over. Oh, golly. Uh, I'll probably kick a switch. I ain't supposed to or something. Eject us. Yeah. It does have ejects. Does it? No. <laughs> uh, I'm in. Let's watch Kenny climb in now. <laughs> he's an expert. I'm sure he's done it bunches of times. Yeah, you, you just couldn't come on. Easy on like you did. Slide in. Alright, look at this contraption here I'm trying to put on. <laughs> got a belt that goes across the middle and I got one that goes up through here. Alright. Has that got me in? I right, got two shoulder belts. I got Sam on here trying to start digging. <laughs> That's our special guest today. <laughs> I don't know what so, he's doing to me here. I, I feel like I'm in a race car or something. Start it up here. Wow, you know, look at all this stuff. Now, he's got these three screens here. I guess so he can watch three different TV channels at the same time <laughs> while he's flying. Well, these, <laughs> these two are exactly the same. Yeah. And then this has got your engine stuff and fuel and then and have your map and stuff. But I'll show you the flight. You can take and split this one or that one. Yeah. And put a map or traffic or whatever over there. Wow. Well, so. And just so you know, I got my, my learner's permit about 10 minutes ago. <laughs> so uh, we're going to see if I can fly this thing too. This is the easiest starting you probably ever do on the plane. But you got back to idle. You punch that button. 
you see it start. You got the amps coming down. There's N2 coming up. When you get up to about 12 there, you hit fuel. You see fuel flow coming up, oil pressure. And then, you're watching this. This is your interstage turbine temperature. You don't want it to go all the way over there to the right. You want it to kind of stay out of the yellow. So like that, it's easing up, it's fine. But if it starts to jump over there, then it's, you gotta shut the engine off. But this has a fade egg, which is full authority digital engine control. And if something goes wrong, it's supposed to shut it off. But So all of this is happening automatic? Yeah, all that happens automatic. And um, you can see on this <coughs> next engine, when, it's, when you get to oh, that was one engine, engine. okay. Yeah. Yeah. When you get to 41%, it kicks the starter out. Alpha, but I'm waiting. Alpha 9, zero, bravo. I'm going to let those amps get down to 90. We press the lift. N2, that's just like the secondary fan. I can't get that in my mind. We throttle up and come back. It's got to stop. Call it coming over the gate. So this is a throttle for each engine? Yeah. Okay. Believe it in 30, 30, power, yeah. make sure you're ready. This gets up about 40, 41, get a kick out and start. Bravo, cross the deep reload. Alpha 9, zero, bravo, clear to cross the deep reload. So that starter is spinning the engine until the fuel kicks in and starts yeah, the engine up? Yeah, it gets up until it reaches that 40%, then the starter kick out, and it's a starter generator. So that's providing 28 volts. Oh, okay. You got two, you know, <laughs> generator on each side. It's pretty neat, but the, the computer basically controls the startup. But you still have to watch in case that computer malfunctions. I have had to disengage the uh, starter before. Oh well. So it's, uh, but this it does all right. All right. Most important thing. I'm trying not to touch any buttons <laughs> or any controls. And uh, wow, there's a lot in here. be able to hear the flight uh, audio but you can on Kenny's channel plain and dirt simple and I'll put that on the screen but uh, he'll have all the uh, flight audio on his channel but we are uh, taxiing out uh, get ready to take off Oh, what that river was. 
Kenny, you did a good job. You got us on the ground. <laughs> We're going to pick up some passengers here, and uh, we probably won't be too long. We'll be heading out and taking off again. So that was a nice little landing. Be back. We are getting ready to take off from New Jersey to fly back to Knoxville. And Kenny's programming our GPS here. He's trying to, he thinks he can get us back. We'll see. <laughs> he does. We may or may not. <laughs> may or may not, he said. We're going to land somewhere. <laughs> ready to take off. Kenny said our gas caps are on so uh, we should be good to take off. <laughs>
put us on the ground. He wanted me to fly this thing in and put it on the ground, and I, I don't know about that. <laughs> that control was doing all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Kenny and I have made it back to Knoxville, Tennessee, and uh, he safely got me back on the ground so I can go home. <laughs> so uh, I appreciate Kenny uh, uh, taking me on this flight today, and, and I'll put a, a link on the video screen there how to find his channel. And like I said uh, this morning, he's an interesting channel. He does farming, flying this jet, and he also does excavation work. So uh, if, if, you ain't, if you ain't happy on his channel, you can't be happy. So. Uh, <laughs> Uh, appreciate you watching the video. God bless you. Stick around for the message, if you will. Thanks. I appreciate you sticking around for the message, and I uh, appreciate Kenny the opportunity to go on the flight there to New Jersey with you, and that was a lot of fun. <laughs> I really enjoyed that. And uh, most importantly, we got back safe and sound. So uh, if you haven't seen Kenny's channel, go check him out. Uh, I don't know at what point he's going to post a video uh, like the one that I posted about the flight, but uh, check him out and uh, give him a comment or a subscribe to his channel help him out a little bit so appreciate that kenny and during conversation kenny and i were talking about uh just the wonder of god and the god's power and kenny had made mention that uh being up there flying like he does and looking out and seeing the beauty of the earth and the creation how could anybody challenge or how could anybody say that there is no god so that got me to thinking there are passages of scripture in the bible that talk about god's handiwork and the the majesty of God's power and that even creation speaks of him. So that's what we want to talk about today. There's a passage in Psalms chapter 19 and then another one in Romans chapter 1 verse 20. So those are the ones we want to cover and look at. So in Psalms 19, that's the first one we'll look at. And the very first verse says this, The heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament shows his handiwork. The firmament talking about there is the skies and uh, everything to do with the, the atmosphere. And then it says, day unto day utter speech, and night unto night reveals the knowledge. Talking about that when one day transpires and another day starts, that speaks of the glory of God in creation to sustain our life and sustain this earth, that it goes from one day to the next without even question because God is in authority and God is in the power to keep that going. Secondly there, it says, a night unto night reveals knowledge, that from one night passing into another night reveals the knowledge that God never sleeps. God is always uh, watching over things. God's always in control of stuff. So that one night passes into another night, and then always following the night is the day, the break of morning when the sun comes back up. So we have God to thank for that, and God created that. So it's hard for me to believe that anybody could really realistically look around at the matter of fact, the mountains that I'm looking at across the top of my truck or, or from the sky when Kenny and I were flying to look down on the earth and just to see God's handiwork. I just don't see how somebody could deny the existence and power of God just looking around at what we see. And then in Romans chapter 1 verse 20, it says this, for since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. The word is saying there that because God has created this in such a way, no one can deny the existence of God realistically. People try, and they say a lot of things about the earth and Mother Earth and all the things that go along with that. But it's simply this. God created it, God made it, and God sustains it. In my opinion, that's case closed. So in the commentary, it goes farther and talks about they are without excuse. Listen to this. It says, God holds all men responsible for their refusal to acknowledge what he has shown them of himself in creation. You know, that's the commentary that's speaking about that passage of Scripture saying that all men are going to be held accountable for what they've seen 
and rejected and denied. It goes farther and says this, If a person will respond to the revelation he has, even if it's solely the natural revelation, God will provide some means for that person to hear the gospel. Well, what is the gospel? The gospel is the message of Jesus Christ. That's a church word, I suppose, a Bible word that may get lost in uh, the world that we're living in today. But the gospel is just simply the good news is what it means, the good news of Jesus Christ, that he died for our sins on that cross. He paid the price. The penalty that I owed, the price that I owed, Jesus paid on the cross so that I could have forgiveness of my sins. So when I look around, Kenny and I were flying uh, you know, that day you could look down on the earth and the clouds and it's just amazing to see the earth from, from 36,000 feet and uh, just the beauty of it and to know that God created that. The same God that created that created me and he died for me on the cross so that I could be saved, so that I could have eternal life. I hope that you're trusting in him today. If you're not, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I hope that you'll hear this message. You'll look around at the creation that God has provided for us to see him and know that there is a God and know that he loves you and he paid that price for your sins if you'll accept what he did on the cross, believing and trusting in him as your Lord and Savior. So God bless you and I appreciate you watching.